Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Some updates on Ian. We are going to see, I think, some more significant impacts than we thought yesterday, especially from the wind. I think the wind threat is increasing. It has a little, it was yesterday at times, and today I'm a little more confident we're going to see some pretty good wind gusts, um, even across the Charlotte metro area. We're not under any advisories or watches yet. Doesn't mean we're not going to see the impacts. I do think tropical storm force wind gusts of around 40 to 45 are certainly possible in and around the Piedmont of the Carolinas. I want to show you the track first. And in Florida, we were learning a valuable lesson that people had a really tough time understanding um, the track. And one of the things I want to do to help you know illustrate why this is important to know that the track is only where the center could be, anywhere in the red. But the field of winds or impacts are much greater than just the center. So I'm going to put the wind radii on there. And you could see that the tropical storm force winds extend way beyond that cone because let's say the center of the storm were to track on the edge of the cone, which it could happen, that would mean that there would be winds way out here and way out here. Now, if it were to track on the west side of that cone right there, which is a possibility, well, you would see still a bunch of wind here and a bunch of wind here. So you got to look at the impacts and that wind field is huge. You couple that with the shape of the coast, we're going to see some pretty significant storm surge, I think, coming up into South Carolina and North Carolina as it moves north. Could it get close to hurricane strength again? That's a possibility, but you're talking between 65 and 75 miles per hour. There's not a lot of difference in the impacts. We get caught up in these labels way too much. There's going to be storm surge and wind regardless of what happens. So the interaction with this front is really causing some issues um, as this moves north. Again, it should move here tonight by tomorrow, probably somewhere on the South Carolina coast by Saturday morning down here and by Saturday afternoon up in this area. Let me focus on the storm surge first. So I'm going to move myself out of the way here so you can see. So you can see how expansive the storm surge is. The track's on there, but look at the surge. It's way outside of the cone. So if you're on the South Carolina coast, I'm really concerned around the Charleston area, which is susceptible to high water all the time. Pretty significant surge there. So we'll look at the water inundation based on this run, and we'll go into some areas from Savannah. Um, that's some pretty high water coming in. If you look over on the right, you know, you're talking six, seven feet of water coming in some areas. You get closer to Charleston. Um, you could see some of the high water levels. And in Charleston Harbor, this could be one of the highest water levels they've seen in a while, just because the angle of approach and the setup here, uh, top five water levels. So you could see some areas around Charleston, the areas that typically flood near downtown there, um, certainly look like they're going to see some flooding um, around James Island and then the areas, you know, all around um, downtown and Sullivan, uh, Sullivan's Island. And then go north, you could see the the threat for surge extends way up the coast and even up towards the Wilmington area. While not as extreme, there are some pockets of higher water up there. So please be on guard on the coast. I do think we're going to see some, some pretty significant storm surge there. All right, let's talk about the rain and wind now. I'm back up in the corner now. We'll do the, the future cast here to kind of show you. Now, the wind starts today. It gets kind of breezy, but the worst of this weather is going to be Friday and Friday night. So if you're looking for the worst weather, um, the, the pickup and forward speed of this is actually going to make the rest of the weekend not as bad. But Friday, Friday night are looking pretty bad. So we'll go in tonight. Could see some of the first bands move into areas around Charlotte. But on the coast, you're going to get clobbered pretty quickly tonight as those first rain bands move in. Again, the coupling of heavy rain and storm surge could cause some pretty good flooding and maybe significant flooding in parts of South Carolina in particular. So please be safe down there for my viewers and followers down in uh, South Carolina. By tomorrow morning, you can see after sunrise, the weather's going to go downhill pretty quickly in Charlotte. So pretty heavy rain uh, most of Friday. These heavy rain bands move in. You could see the heavier rain bands by the middle of the day moving in. And once we get to about the afternoon, uh, we're in some really big downpours. And again, the rainfall rates here could be tremendous on Friday. So Friday is going to be absolutely ugly. Now, severe weather-wise, there's good news in this. I don't expect any severe weather in our area because the warm air is not going to be here. It's going to be kind of chilly and raw here. So the severe weather risk is going to be here. So you folks in eastern North Carolina, that's where there's a tornado risk tomorrow. So just a heads up, these bands coming in around Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, they could have tornadoes in them. So just a heads up. For, for the western Carolinas and the Piedmont, this is just solid heavy rain. 5, 6 o'clock, the evening rush for Friday, horrible. That's the worst time of day. So if you could avoid the evening rush hour on Friday, I would avoid it like the plague, honestly, because that looks like just a mess. You know how roads are around here when it rains, regardless of how heavy it is. That's heavy rain and wind. You see it pushing in. Now, the whole time, the winds could be gusting to 45 or 50. So you couple that with some rain. Some trees and power lines could come down. So 
it's not out of the realm of possibility we could see some um, some power outages so you might want to prepare for that as well charge everything up maybe just have a backup just in case we lose power on um, friday evening that storm moves through fairly quickly which is the good news in this so the heavy rain continues into friday night by midnight <coughs> excuse me the heavy rain moves out now the mountains this is going to linger for a while so you folks in the mountains this will linger into saturday morning because the rain will move out um, probably by Saturday late morning after sunrise. The dry slot moves in. So what does that mean? Dry air wraps around the backside and it kind of shuts off the rain. So this heavy rain band out here and to the north. In fact, for folks that maybe be watching to the north of us, this heavy rain starts to shift up there. It takes on that comma shape where the dry air surges in down here. So Saturday is looking much better. And as we go into Saturday afternoon, probably going to be windy with some isolated showers, but not too bad. So let's loop this whole thing. This is through 60 hours. You could see this thing blasting us as it moves up into the Carolinas. So what are we talking about as far as wind speeds? Well, these are the maximum sustained winds currently forecast through Saturday night, 8 p.m. I do think 36 is a little low. I would go more 40 to 45. And again, that's the maximum gust, not sustained. Sustained, you're probably looking at more 20, maybe 25 with gusts to 35 at times maybe as high as 40 or 45 rainfall wise again pretty heavy rainfall here if we go into time i'll show you how this unfolds we'll go through tomorrow morning rain moves in but this is by 2 p.m friday um, by friday uh, night into saturday morning really heavy rain and by saturday morning you see the rain pushing out and the rain lingering into saturday for the mountains so some of these totals i think some of these might be a little bit high but again, because this is falling over a short period of time, the flash flood risk is pretty significant, um, especially across the mountains where the runoff's quick. And then the urban centers like cities like Charlotte, Gastonia, Hickory, where there's a lot of impervious surface, that rain washes off pretty quickly and could cause some flash flooding. So I, right now, I'd say three to five inches is a pretty good bet with the mountains, four to seven inches possible up there. So again, the timing, mainly Friday, Friday night into early Saturday, wind and rain are the two things we're worried about, not tornadoes. I would charge everything up right now, get prepared just in case we see some power outages Friday night. No advisories currently except for the Tropical Storm Watch for Lancaster and Chesterfield County, but don't be surprised if flood watches, high wind warnings, uh, wind advisories for sure, and maybe even a tropical storm warning and last minute issued for our area because we see tropical storm force winds.